I thought of this is really good. So I've looked at a lot of recommended zoo lists before and I'd never heard of Dudley Zoo, but it turned out to be a bit of a hidden gem. It's built on a steep slope around the castle and has been around since 1937. It now has over 1,300 animals with nearly 200 different species, including our friendly distant cousins and the animal that produces some of the world's most expensive coffee. So plenty to see. When you arrive, you are faced with a big decision. Do I take one of the two steep paths up to the animals, or do I take the precarious looking chairlift? We went with the chairlift, and after jumping into a moving chair, we began the slow ascent up to the top platform, watching the ground move further and further away from us. After debating at what point I wouldn't survive the fall, we finally reached the top platform to be greeted by the first animals of the day. All jokes aside, it was actually quite fun. Right next to the chairlift was the reindeer enclosure. They had a male there with massive antlers, and we managed to see a mother and child getting their steps in through the enclosure. They can actually sprint up to 50 miles per hour, which is something I didn't know, and the male and female shed their antlers at different times of the year, which is why only the male had antlers there. We then made our way past some Lar Gibbons to the next few enclosures. The map was a bit off, but using our navigation skills we managed to find our way to the Bornean Orangutan House. They have lots of information about the orangutans here, and the palm oil industry, which is a big problem in causing habitat loss. They also have possibly the largest outdoor area that I've seen for orangutans, which was really good. They have two adult males, two adult females, and two baby males there. This is a picture of the family tree. And we managed to see one of the males, one of the females, and both of the kids. One male is separated off by himself, whilst the others live together, which sounds a bit sad but they are solitary animals and they do say he prefers to be alone watching people go past the window. Definitely my favorite great ape. Around the corner from the orangutans is the Asiatic lions. They have two females here and they have a massive outdoor area which you can see from several places. The lions and tigers were both shut in due to high winds. Yes, this thing was still open. So we didn't get to see any tigers on the day, but we did manage to get a good view of both the lions through a hole in the fence. The last part of this area was a lemur walkthrough. There wasn't many lemurs about, but it was a nice little nature walk and there's plenty of room for them to hide from us. Onwards. We then followed this path past several different enclosures. At the start, there's macaws, tuto sloths and Asian short clawed otters. These are the smallest of the 13 species of otter and we did manage to get a good view of them nibbling away. Further down was a variety of different bird enclosures, one of which had the cassowary which is actually the second largest species of bird, second only to the ostrich, these horrible things. Opposite the cassowary enclosure was the Barbary sheep. They were all huddled together for cleaning, but this absolute sigma wasn't having any of it and decided to stay at the top alone. Next door to them was an open area, which had lots of wallabies hopping around, and opposite to them was the capybara pen. But sadly, no capybaras. They did, however, have maras in the same area, which are another type of large rodent. And there was also a house with some tapirs in it, where they offer a tickler tapir experience. Have you ever heard of Kopi Luwak? It's a type of coffee processing that consists of partially digested cherries that have been eaten by the next animal, an Asian palm civet. The cherries are fermented as they pass through the civet's intestines, and then they are collected to produce some of the world's most expensive coffee. The palm civet there shared its enclosure with a binturong, which looked friendly, but he wasn't going to let the civet in his treehouse. We then made our way in a bit of a circle before reaching the castle. First passing the giraffes, which they had two of there, then the Carpathian lynx, which they also had two of there. We then came to the Sumatran tiger enclosure, but they had been shut away. This thing had closed by now. And next to them was the Arctic fox enclosure, which was the first time I'd seen these. Opposite this was the snow leopard enclosure, which are a type of big cat that live at high altitudes on rocky slopes. And they also had a wolverine, some armadillos, and a few different species of birds around there. Making our way around the corner, we walked towards the penguin cove, which was a bit of a ghost town. Usually penguins are out and about, but we didn't see any until we peered into one of the houses to see a little head poking out. Next to these was the Patagonian sea lions, which were being cleaned at the time, so we did manage to get quite a close-up view of one of them. Next door was another pool as well, which had a third who looked to be enjoying himself. Just off this area was a little monkey section that had quite a few different species. They had some capuchins, some pygmy marmosets, and there was also quite a few lemurs there as well. 
After that, we made our way into the castle grounds. It is quite a well-maintained castle, and on a less windy day, you can go up one of the towers. They also have this walkthrough there, which has a lot of the history about the castle and the area. And it also has a few smaller enclosures, and it has some bats at the end. It was quite cool to walk through, and they seem to have tried to maintain as much of the original castle as they can. Or made it look like that. The last stop before making our way down the steep hill was the reptile house. If you're a fan of boas, this is the place to go. They had five different species there, along with a few other snakes some lizards, some turtles, and two dwarf crocodiles, which are the smallest species of crocodile. We then went down this path to see a few more animals before the exit, the first of which was the chimpanzees. There was a group of only females here, which is probably why they weren't running around screaming. And they have an indoor area, which is where they all were, and then a large outdoor area. The final animal we saw was the Bactrian camels, which they had four of there before the floods came down and we hastily made our way to the exit. I'd never seen this zoo on any recommended list, but it turned out to be really good and definitely worth going. There's several large animals, a lot of rare animals and quite a few unique features there, like the castle, the tecton enclosures and the vintage chairlift. I also saw a few new animals and learned a few new things. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe and I will see you next time.